Greetings. Our quote for the day is, all courses of action are risky, so prudence is not avoiding danger. It's impossible, but calculating risk and acting decisively, make mistakes of ambition and not mistakes of sloth. Develop the strength to do bold things, not the strength to suffer. Nicola Machiavelli, 16th century Italian philosopher. Greetings. Today's talk focuses on uh, the fact that I love doing stuff on trucks because it's, a, it's what made our bread and butter and um, always appreciate hearing from my friends around the world, especially in Sweden, because you have all that electric stuff there and the ladies are gorgeous, etc. So thanks for the note. Uh, what we're focused on today is that I decided to do a second show only because I love it when we got a chance to uh, delve into what's going on with the Tesla Semi because it ends up being sort of a quiet issue, but one that a lot of people are focused on because it's one of the most impactful uh, what's gonna happen going forwards. So please note what my title is, is that Daimler 1000 electric trucks. Uh, BYD, 5,000 electric trucks and counting, and Tesla, two. So it's been fascinating. So the concentration of my focus is sort of review the trucking electric process that different folks are approaching things with and perhaps what the implications are. This is a Tesla-focused channel, so we'll really dive into the Tesla angle on how things are working right now. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time on the channel, please take time to like and subscribe. If you're a repeat visitor, please uh, uh, don't forget we need support on Patreon to help keep our channel going in a healthy way and growing. And uh, your likes and comments definitely impact that. I also wanted to note that the quote I gave you came from this uh, book called A Tribe Called A Tribe of Mentors. And I thought that Machiavelli comment regarding how one should per pursue your process very much fits Elon Musk. I think it's a it's a great quote that fits this uh, the company and the topic. So um, getting on to our topic today, I sort of dove into the whole truck space after starting off on Tesla a year and a half ago. And I was fascinated because it was two months before Tesla announced their truck in April. And uh, at that point, Daimler had been doing truck products where they would design the products in with a partner in Portugal. They have them doing short run uh, trucking efforts. And then as the concept was proved there that the vehicles were being shipped to Germany and then now being tested with customers, I wanna say on light duty with engineers following those trucks around to see what they were up to and how the customers were handling and modifications that needed to be done. So what's fascinating to me is that basically in the case of BYD, B, in, in the case of Daimler, Daimler is approximately five years into having a lot of truck products on the road, a lot meaning about a thousand vehicles, everything from class six to class seven. And now they're starting to put class eight vehicles out. They're pending 200 trucks being delivered to customers that are electric by the end of 2018 and they've got partnerships with Ryder and others. Daimler's approach has been to try to protect their 40% market share in trucks by offering electric products. And the manner in which they're operating right now is very much concentrated on looking out for the best technology they can buy and integrate into the trucks that's currently available. They're avoiding going to the point of doing their own core research. And therefore, as we get to mid 2018, they have a pretty good quality solution when it comes to a thermal management system, but they're not at the stage where they're building their own batteries. And so they're kind of stuck right now. And their strategy is let's keep systematically building a more uh, robust truck and then go from there. So as of 2017, um, the, uh, as of tw 2017, the, 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 the range of the, the basic Daimler truck was at about the 100 mile range. We're now in 2018 
and uh, the Dama truck range is stated to be now 200 miles. And so there seems to be progress that's going on with the battery manufacturers they're using in Asia, combined with the systems they're putting together in Germany. But I think Daimler is a company to watch here, or Daimler is a company to watch, because you'll notice that they don't have a listing of large numbers of electric vehicles on the road, with the exception of the smart car, which is not really you know, a mid-sized car that a lot of people would want to drive. And so basically, I would argue Daimler has zero uh, vehicles on the road. And, um, you know, the, the issue that's popping up right now is um, sort of what are they going to do? And the answer is everybody, there's a hundred billion dollars worth of electric vehicles announced by the top 10 auto manufacturers within the next two years. The key to it is that there's a huge number of announcements and those announcements are one or two gigafactories worth of cars if the batteries were available. But it turns out that something's gonna give here where if you don't already have the batteries, part of the delay is you gotta have to get battery inventory and battery that allows you to perform in the manner that has been described. And that's questionable whether or not that's gonna occur. The, so in general with Daimler or Daimler, the focus has been to protect their turf by announcing products they are not necessarily delivering. And then what they're doing is they're stepping from there of these sort of basic announcements. And then we'll see sort of what goes on post that. Um, I have included BYD here because when it comes to electric trucks, BYD is perhaps number one in the world in terms of the number of installed locations. So as you all know, we've discussed the fact that BYD is manufacturing garbage trucks, buses, etc., in a place called Carlsbad, California. They've also now announced they're opening up an assembly plant in Canada to serve that marketplace. And those vehicles or pro products are being built in China and shipped to these locations. Now, when I point out that there are 5,000 vehicles out there that are trucks that are BYD related, most of these installs have been in China. And as we've been seeing BYD install products in the United States, uh, in particular, the install that we've been able to get information on is what's going on with their buses that they've been installing in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where the, the build quality of the, of the batteries in particular is so horrible that there's a consideration that those, that contract may be canceled. So BYD is doing low bids with very low quality uh, trucks or, or and charging products. And the result is that they're losing customers like crazy. By the way, it should also be noted that there may be other manufacturers out there that I don't know as well, but there's a range of sub 100 miles when it comes to uh, range of a vehicle, like in that 50 mile range, there are hundreds of manufacturers that have put out electric vehicles that will go into that market niche. I'm avoiding the sub 100 mile group of manufacturers because that's kind of a, a different, uh, you know, there's a large number of players there. They don't necessarily have stuff that works that great in the target market that Tesla's focusing, which is where the most pollution is you know, in those 18-wheeler semis that are going the long distance. As we reviewed, 5% of the vehicles on the roads are uh, semi-trucks. They represent 25% of the pollution from those diesel engines that we experience in the society. Uh, so in the case of BYD, we're at 5,000 vehicles, and um, many of those vehicles have shown themselves to not be up to standards that customers want to stick with short and long term. Let's now graduate over to where we are with the Teslas. In the case of Tesla, we only have two vehicles on the road. And I, the, the question keeps coming up is, why is Tesla only putting two trucks on the road? A, and B, Tesla is doing test runs that allow engineers and executives from different companies, as well as even regular uh, Tesla owners to drive these vehicles, but you're not sending this to a potential large customer so they can expend ex extensive time in those vehicles in a manner which Daimler as well as BYD are able to do currently. 
the answer is that there's only one truck in the world currently that can choose the three or 500 mile range and get it done and that's Tesla. And so the proprietary materiel for executing that both battery um, and other components, Tesla doesn't want that out in the public um, you know, as a de facto patent on how they're doing it. So as the head of uh, the trucks for Daimler articulated, if in fact Tesla is able to do this, we're going to need to buy two of these because uh, um, one of them will drive around, the other one will take apart to actually figure out, you know, what it is that that we're doing wrong because we have a long way to catch up. And so obviously one of Tesla's goal is not to release how they're doing this, uh, both batteries and all other components. Uh, and let competitors figure it out on their own. And that way, when they do come to market, they'll come to market forcefully with large numbers of vehicle so they can capture a lot of market share without having competitors have an easy time of catching up. So I, you know, from my humble opinion, it's my belief that Tesla has um, a situation where they actually are able to do things with the truck. And I really think they're doing short runs of specialty batteries that go in both the truck and the new Roadster that they don't want out there in the marketplace before they've deemed it uh, necessary. And that's one of the benefits of having your own battery factory is uh, you can, uh, um, wow. Interesting. Um, yeah, great, com uh, great comments there. Um, so I'm sort of fascinated by, by what's going on here because I was actually kind of surprised that Daimler is more focused on protecting their market share in trucks than they are in protecting their market share in cars in terms of getting test vehicles out there that different types of customers can use to start the evaluation process and be prepared once they have a viable vehicle. Um, I also find it fascinating to watch the difference in attitude between BYD and what's going on at Tesla. Uh, or BYD and what's going on at Daimler. Daimler is getting trucks out there in front of customers. They're charging a nominal fee like $1,000 a month uh, for the lease, which is a fraction of the real cost of those vehicles. But they're trying to preserve the right for electri electrifying the fleets of those large customers by building rapport with them. And they can put, if you will, a billion dollars or two or three, a uh, billion dollars worth of vehicles, but a billion or two dollars worth of R&D on the road because that's a blip against the huge number of sales and profits that they make in each of these respective marketplaces. So today's goal was primarily just focus on truck, truck, truck. What's going on? Who's doing what and why? I'm really shocked right now that uh, the size of Walmart hasn't been able to get Tesla to get off a truck and allow them to run product from, you know, build a um, uh, a, product, a charging facility and then start gathering a group of trucks that will run directly from Walmart to their facilities so Walmart can collect data on that and therefore go ahead and buy, make a huge purchase right as this is ready. It's very interesting Tesla is choosing the sort of process they're doing which is to simply you know allow these folks to see the truck in operation with weight behind it, climbing mountains, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this brings me up to another sort of interesting footnote here, which is Tesla is taking on uh, mountains like the Grapevine in Los Angeles, as well as um, in the Sierra Nevada, the 7,500 foot peak that's between the Giga factory and, and uh, the Fremont factory. Um, I'm, just, uh, I'm just fascinated by the fact that bottom line, you have an interesting process where the truck process for di different manufacturing is very different. Daimler wants to preserve their reputation and their relationship with their current customers. Very small numbers of vehicles that are more retrofits of existing vehicles that are going on without a brand new product because they know they really don't have the battery to be competitive right now. But they also don't want to lose relationships with customers completely if they've gone electric with someone else. In the case of BYD, they have no customer relationships and they're willing to risk those relationships by putting out crappy vehicles that allows them to grab market share 
and fix stuff later. Kind of like the Microsoft model where you just get a piece of software out there and then we'll fix it later. Um, interesting. Very good point about Volvo and getting started on the garbage trucks in Sweden. Uh, I thought this was interesting, but they really don't have the body, the, the vehicle count yet to really compete with even what Daimler is doing in terms of their test vehicles that are out there. Um, so again, this was really a, hey, what's the news on trucks? Where are we? I'm kind of getting excited because as we finish out the final stage of the Gigafactory, there'll be enough to provide Model 3s globally and now start the, the production of those batteries to be used in the semi-trucks. And so I'm looking forward to stabilizing in the seven to 8,000 a vehicle um, a week zone. And once uh, Europe and then Asia is open to the Model 3, that'll be the signal that there's enough battery inventory now for Tesla to start using those packs at three at a time within their truck products. Um, you know, there is a random question that's out there, which is, hey, why doesn't Tesla just do a 200 mile truck and that we can split the battery pack, um, uh, uh, you know, we can go from there. Yeah, I would love to have a picture of the garbage truck that's electric from, uh, from Volvo folks. I, I question whether uh, Tesla would go after the, 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 uh, that market of garbage trucks only because they're really trying to target and concentrate their truck activities where the most pollution occurring and they're not competitors already there that provide reasonable solutions. So in the case of garbage trucks, they go relatively short distances and you can have time to recharge in between runs if your vehicle doesn't go very long distance, but you can uh, power that vehicle back up. Let's say if it's emptying out, you could hook it up and, and uh, go from there. Um, hey, Jerry, good question about what about fire trucks? Um, you know, they you know, often have uh, multiple, um, fire trucks often have multiple engines so they can haul all that water long distances and gear. Um, at this point, you know, the way that if you think about it, fire trucks put mileage on the trucks, but they generate a lot more pollution for tr so if you have Walmart and they're sending a truck to that store every day, the amount of pollution that comes from a truck running 100,000 miles a year is different than a truck that's going 1,000 or 2,000 a year. So for what they're trying to do, it could happen in, um, in fire trucks, but I just don't see, they're, they're kind of really concentrating on high polluting uh, uses of big trucks. And so therefore I think you know, they're sort of concentrated and focused in that arena. So I wanted to sort of run us through where we are on trucks in all three cases. Um, I also found it interesting, uh, you know, an interesting phenomenon that's going on is just the fact that one could argue that all these entities that have a large number of trucks on the road are collecting data that make them superior to Tesla, particularly a thousand units, 5,000 versus Tesla's two trucks. The one argument against that is the fact that with all the cars that Tesla has on the road, that data, you know, be it temperature, elevation, climbs, all this data that they're generating on their cars and use of batteries, I'm fascinated by the fact that all of that data is being collected and sort of the battery performance is therefore being able to anticipate how trucks might be impacted. And so we'll note that Tesla is the only truck company that's offering a million mile guarantee on their batteries. So there's an example of how they can have only two trucks on the road, but already be superior to entities that have thousands of trucks out there uh, that are in customer hands. At any rate, um, I wanna thank all you guys for taking time out to uh, view our video today and listen to our quote from Machiavelli that we really think fits what Tesla's up to. Um, we look forward to every opportunity we can to sort of dive into the truck discussion because it really helps us to understand sort of where we are now, where we're going, and in particular, what Tesla's doing in those, um, uh, uh, in those arenas. Yeah, very good point. Uh, you're right, the, uh, the fire trucks have plenty of time to charge, so you know, they can have relatively short battery distances and it won't be a big deal. But I have to tell you, if, um, if I was Elon Musk, based on a goal of reducing our 
uh, pollution the, back, the fire trucks are the last trucks that I would consider electrifying because they're just not putting enough um, miles on the road each year to make them a high priority for how um, you reduce the, uh, the carbon footprint uh, of vehicles out there. Again, um, I wanted to thank you all for taking time out to join us as usual. Um, we look forward to our next show. We, we're supposed to do one tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I, you're right, Jerry, idling does produce a lot of pollution, but uh, you know, nothing like some of the other uh, applications do. I want to thank all of you for taking time out to, to visit with us. Uh, if this is your first time on our channel, please take time to like and subscribe. Um, also wanted to recommend uh, that you um, comment. It definitely has an impact. And um, we definitely need some help on Patreon if you would. Uh, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Looking forward to once we can all get a chance to drive uh, the, uh, the truck. And I want to note to my friend from Sweden that, uh, hey, if you buy those four Teslas, I'm inviting you to California so we can go for the, uh, w from that referral, we actually get to drive the semi in California. So you guys should hit our referral. And if we get to the referral numbers necessary, we'll all go on the trip to California to get a chance to drive the semi on the Tesla track that's been built. Again, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Looking forward to the Tesla numbers that come out today. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, la hitra haute, um, uh, Hebrew, chorda hafez, farsi, farvel, um, Dutch, and in Jamaica we say, no respect, walk, good mind. All right, have a great day, and I look forward to your uh, comments on the video afterwards.